What's good on YouTube? It's your boy Cam. We're back with another YouTube video and today is my hell testimony part two. Uh, I had many encounters, but uh, I'm just allowing the Lord to let me know which one to talk about because hell is real. But I just want to give all the glory to Jesus Christ and just his platform. And I want to say thank you for all the support on my last video. And uh, man, thank you so much. I never thought we would get to this point, you know, in life and in my YouTube. I always wanted to do YouTube just to talk about, and it's to glorify Jesus, really. You know, it's not about it's not about money. It's not about materialistic things. It's not about clout. None of that. It's about serving the Prince of Peace, serving the one true God, serving the King of Kings, serving the Alpha and Omega, because he changed my life and he's changing your lives and he's changing everyone else's lives around us. So uh, recently, my grandpa died. He was on my dad's side. I didn't really know him like that. Uh, we wasn't very close. But yeah, he died of cancer. And um my mom actually told me that he was dying. And then um, that week, the Lord showed, well, he took me to go see him at, in his hospital bed. I remember in the Lord, uh, he was wearing a white garment and um, it was very bright. And he had put his hand on my grandpa's chest. And I was just look, staring at him, just looking at him. And I remember I went back home. And then the next day I ended up going to work. And um, my mom, I ended up coming back home from work and my mom ended up telling me that he died, my grandpa died. I remember that the Lord had told me to call him and ask him about his salvation, if he knew who Jesus was and to to repent of his sins. And I didn't get to it, I actually forgot and he ended up dying. So I ended up, I was a little sad. But like I said, I wasn't very close with him, so I wasn't very emotional. But I remember, um, I remember I asked God, I said, God, where did he go? Did he go to heaven or did he go to hell? And a couple of days later, the Lord took me to hell and my grandpa went to hell. And it was very vivid. The, the vision was very vivid. It wasn't a dream, I was still awake and the Lord was showing me. Because hell is real, Jesus is real. And when you die, you're gonna meet the creator. And you have to repent of your sins, you have to repent. Us Christians have to repent on a daily basis. But God gives us grace and he gives us mercy to live every single day but it's sin that the Lord hates. The Lord hates sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. If you if you, if you you live in sin, you're gonna reap is what you're gonna sow. God hates sin. He hates it. And we have to repent and we have to seek help. The Lord's gonna help us. We can't do it on our own will because we have no strength, we have no power. But it's the one that defeated the sin on the cross, which was Jesus Christ. He's the only way to get to the Father. Before Abraham was born, he says, I am. Meaning he was all the way in Genesis, all the way to the book of Revelation. Jesus is still alive today. And um, I remember when I walked into hell, there was like these uh, these pits and it had skeletons in it. And there were, there were flames with fire and they were engulfing the people in there. But there were, there were skeletons because they'd been in there for a long time. And I remember I was, I was walking past this one pit, the skeleton was trying to, it was trying to t grab my leg to seek for help. But then I remember that the fire just engulfed it, engulfed the person and the skeleton fell back down in the pit. The pit was probably like 20 feet deep. It was pretty, it was, it was pretty deep. And I was just passing through the pits. I remember I stopped at this one specific pit on the right side and it was my grandpa, I seen his face and he was screaming in agony and pain because the fire was just burning him. And it's like, I'm, you, I, you, you, I can't really show any emotions because it's just so vivid. But hell is real. Many people go there, especially Christians. Many Christians go there. And the Bible makes it very clear in scripture. And um, as soon as I saw him, he spoke to me. He said, I'm in here for, for being a drunk and committing adultery. And he says, he says, even Jesus came to me in my dream. Specifically, he said, even Jesus came to me in my dream and told me to repent. And I didn't repent. And he said, he said, Cameron, tell your dad that I'm in this place. Tell your dad that he needs to repent. Tell your brothers and sisters that heaven and hell is real. And I'm here forever. And he looked straight in my eyes. And he said, why didn't you help me? And he said that because I was supposed to call him on the phone and tell him about Jesus. And he died and he went to hell. Hell is real and it's scary, very scary. I remember I kept walking there, these beast demons 
they was they, they was walking. They was grabbing these men, these 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 men by the neck, and just dragging them. And the men was right in front of me, and they looked straight in my eyes. And they said I was. I, they said I'm in here for watching porn, committing adultery, and cheating. And they were in there because they didn't repent. It was four. It was like I think it was like four of them. I said the exact same thing. Each beast was just grabbing them by the neck, grabbing them by the neck, and just and, and just and just dragging them as they were talking to me. I remember I looked on my right side. There was like these these boys. They're like they looked like they were eight, nine, ten, or eleven, and they were in here for stealing and lying to their parents because the first commandment and in the, in, in the ten commandments say honor your father and honor your mother. And most of this generation, including me, sometimes we don't honor our parents like we're supposed to. We we need to repent for it because Jesus is real and Jesus is coming soon. It's not a game. It's not a game. And I remember I kept walking. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the, the lake of fire. And in the lake of fire, there were there were false prophets, there were preachers, and there were people that were still from the church. The one the ones that did God dirty, the ones that showed people God's character, they 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 allowed, they showed other people that God's character was bad and that wasn't of God. They manipulated people to get what they wanted. They had all these materialistic things to get what they wanted, but they they stole from God. They lied and said it was from God. And and all of these people that I spoke to and all these people that I seen, they all had something in common. They did not repent of their sins. And this, I remember this one, this one, one pastor. I didn't, I couldn't see his face. He was a skeleton. He was laying in the, in the lake of fire. And he was engulfed in flames. He was, in, he was in pain. He was in agony. I remember him saying, he said, he said, I'm in here. He said, I, I'm in here forever. And I don't exactly remember what he said, but um, he said he didn't repent. And he said that the Lord told him to repent. And he, and he did it because he was just living life, having a good time. And he said he just, he just died. And now he's in there for eternity. Eternity. There's no time in heaven or hell. You in there for eternity. And I remember I was, I was, I was so scared. I was like, Lord, why aren't, why aren't you showing me the full thing? And he, because it's, he said it's vivid. It, 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 even when he was blurring the stuff out in hell, I, it, it was still scary. And these demons, they were walking. They would, I, and I remember when I was talking to my grandpa, one of the demons went in the pit and just, just like this, this, and like this devoured him. And and he was in pain. He was screaming for help. I remember this one lady when I was in there. The, and as I'm seeing these people, the Lord it isn't showing me their face. He, he showed me their face, but I can't recognize them. The only person I could have recognized was my grandpa. And all these other people, they were either skeletons or their face was blurred out. I remember I went to this one lady and uh, she was in there. She was in there for committing suicide because her, 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 her boyfriend got killed. And she was so attached to her boyfriend spiritually and, and physically that she ended up committing suicide. And she, she used to sell her body for money. And she was in there because of that. And I remember all the demons came and they 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 started scratching her up. They started rape. They they were even raping her. And it was so it was so horrible that I had to I had to turn up turn my head. And the Lord gave me a list of people in my family to tell them that they needed to repent of their sins. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, that hell and and heaven is real. Angels are real. Demons are real. The Bible says your life is like a vapor. It's here and it's gone tomorrow. If you watch porn, I struggle with it. I struggle with lust. I struggle with talking to females. I struggle with pride. But it's only because of Jesus. He has, he, he, he's the one to save us all. He's the one to help us. He helps me. And even when I don't get it together, it's through God's grace. Because people are dying every single day. They're going to hell. They're going to heaven. Whatever they're going, it is real. Why do you think your life is going by fast? Pause the video and just think about when you was the grade that you was in last the last year, the place that you're in now, the position that you're in now. How fast it's going? How much you're growing? How old are you getting? Because life, the Bible even says it. Everything that the life is going on right now, the Bible says it, even political. And they say that the, they said, you said Jesus can't be in politics, but every prophet and every king was in politics. Jesus is in politics. Jesus is controlling this world. I seen Jesus and Jesus looked at me and said, 
don't you understand what I'm doing? It was it was it was, it was a it was an earth and it, and it was a digital. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus, you are screwed. But I'm here to tell you that today is the day of salvation to get yourself together because it wasn't an accident that you're clicking on this video. I used to be a liar. I used to be a, a thief. I used to be an adulterer. But Jesus saved my life. I was almost murdered. I was almost murdered by this one guy. And he ended up killing somebody else. And if I would have died, I would have went straight to hell. No question. I, because I wasn't living my life like I was saying. I wasn't living my life for Jesus. And when you live your life for Jesus, you give up the world for him. Because this world is a sinful place. And yet we are still sinners. But it's through the grace of God. If you don't know who, who God is, you're screwed. You are screwed. But I'm here to tell you that there's still hope. In Psalms 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shine out, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the shadow, shadow of the valley of the valley, valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepar preparest a table f before me in the presence of my enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over, surely goodness and the mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Meaning that the Lord got your back regardless, regardless if you live in his sin. But you have to turn around, you have to turn around from your life. Because sin is what keeps us in bondages and hold us together for the enemy to come after us. We have real life enemies. They're beams, they're demons, and they're coming after anybody who they can devour. And Jesus is speaking to you directly. He says, change your life. He says, come to me and I'm going to change your life for your greater good. The Lord says, I love you and I see every pain that you go through. I see every, I see that family member. And for the people that need healing, the Lord's going to heal you. It's his will to heal you. But he says, let go of this life. And I'm going to save you. But the Bible says, bless those with a pure heart, for they will see God. God will make your heart pure. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that he died on the cross, and he rose from the, on, on the third day, you, you're going to be saved. But it's through your faith in Jesus Christ. That you'll be safe forever. And you hold on to it. You, gr you grasp it. You grab onto it. And you endure to the end. You fight the good fight. You're going to be saved. But it's, it's a constant fight every single day for your soul. The enemy is killing and stealing and destroy everyone everyone who can get. But the Lord says, I'm not going to let you. I'm not going to let you. I'm not, I'm not going to let you. I'm not going to let you. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not going to let the enemy steal your soul. But it's, it's just the suffering. Are you willing to suffer for Jesus because of what he's done for you? Are you willing to let go everything in your life, even materialistic things, to run after Jesus? It's through faith. It's faith. It's what you cannot see. But if you have a relationship with Jesus and you endure it to the end, I promise you, you have mansions waiting for you. You have people waiting for you in heaven. Man, Jesus changed my life. I'm a living testimony, and I'm still being a vessel for the Lord. I don't care what nobody say because I know that Jesus is real. He changed my life. He changed the people around around me lives, and He continued to change your life. But um, that being said, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be talking about my heaven encounter uh, soon. But um, yeah, like, share, comment. And let's subscribe and, and, and share it to anybody you, you, you desire. You feel like they need this message, man. God loves you and so do I. And thank you for being part of the family. And uh, Jesus loves you so much. And I know you hear that every single day. But he, he, he died on the cross for your sins. But he says, repent of your sins and come back to me. And I'm going to show you how real I am. And today's the day where your life is going to change forever, whether you believe in God or not. Whether you're coming back to him out of your lukewarm phase or not. Bless those with a pure heart, for they will see God. <laughs> I love you. So do God does. Peace out.